flute band again. Good morning. We're going to, uh, you may stand. If you care to, you can dance or you can sit in your chair and enjoy. shining so brightly this morning and thank all of you for joining us this morning and shining so brightly it's wonderful to see all your faces and it's wonderful to have people online joining us and I'm sure they're shining too I just can't see them right now welcome to shining mountain center for spiritual living and if you're new here please pick up a welcome packet or sign up for our email list or even put a, a prayer for prayer in the prayer request form. We're glad you're here. And we love seeing new people, and we, we like shining. You know, here at Shining Mountains, we like to celebrate the part that each one of us is an individual aspect of God. We're all divine. Whether you're here in the community, whether you're online, whether you're out in the world, everybody you see is part divine. It's good to remember that, but it's even better to celebrate it. So please, join me with our statement of purpose. Our community lovingly and joyfully inspires, supports, and empowers individuals to express and express their divinity. I have a few announcements. We have a new website. Check it out. The URL is up there. And it's a big thanks to Oliver, Steve, and Rochelle Kahn. <laughs> please, please check this out. <laughs> you can scan for, get direct access to it. Now, isn't that slick? Uh, these are on the back table. Take them, share them. Say hi. 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 Hi.
play with them. <laughs> Make airplanes out of them. Thank you. You hear the boss lady now. Make sure you do that. <laughs> Make airplanes, yeah. Every Wednesday from 7.30 to 8, we have a Zoom meditation. And on the back table, you'll find the instructions to get on Zoom. T tomorrow, not tomorrow, next week, September 2nd, we're going to be feeding the flathead at Bethlehem Lutheran Church. There's sign-up sheets in the back, and if you, can, if you can sign up, please come. On September 6th, we're having a special guest. Reverend 8th, I'm sorry, I have the wrong on my, my sheet. That Sunday. <laughs> He's going to be here, and his name is Dr is Reverend Dr. Christian Sorensen, and he's going to be sharing his wisdom with us. And he's kind of a rock star in the, center, in, in the CSL bunch. He's highly credentialed. He's the leader of Seaside Center for Spiritual Living. He's the author of 10 books. That sounds a lot just there. And he's an amazing and inspired and gifted speaker. We're very fortunate for him to come talk to us, so please... Join us on September 8th and bring a friend. If we can get more people here to hear him, that would be good. So bring a friend on September 8th. And now it's time to say hello to your neighbor. Either meet a new friend, <laughs> say hello to an old one. Let, let's enjoy the moment. day with love. This could be the last week we sing this. No, you'll sing it one more week. One more week. And then this goes back into the folder for a while. You can stand, sit, dance. Chair dancing is encouraged. Yeah. 
good voice today. Thank you so much for the love you share with all of us here. <laughs> Blessings. So we've come to that time in our service where we get to honor and bless the children. The children in our congregation, the children in our community, the children in the world, knowing that they truly are our future, that they will carry forward the blessings. And so I'd like to ask you to please join me in this blessing. We see you, who you really are, made in the image and likeness of God. We cherish you, we support you, and we love you. And so breathing in that love, that divine and holy presence, knowing that it is in the essence of the divine that we live and breathe and have our being, God the good, omnipotent. God who is light and love and peace and joy, God who is health and wholeness. There is absolutely nothing, nothing outside of God, and we are one with it. Individualized expressions of the one, each one of us an individualized expression of love as we let it shine in through and as us. So as I speak my word, I speak it knowing truly we are blessed. We are filled up and spilling over with that divine and holy presence. I know that each person that we meet is a child of the divine. I know that we embrace this life with joy and love and peace and understanding. And I am so grateful. Grateful for the opportunity that we have to come together in community. Grateful for the light and the love that we share. I simply say thank you, God, as I release this word now to the perfect working of the perfect law, which always, always and only says yes. Please join me in affirming, and so it is. song written by a dear friend of mine, Lou Doty, New Jersey. Breathe with me. Breath in.
I agree with you. Isn't she fantastic? And our musicians, oh my gosh, yeah. We are so blessed. So let's just do that. Let's just take a breath. Because every word, every word that she just sang is the truth about us. It's the truth about our magnificence. It's the truth about our oneness and our connection. So let's just breathe it in because you all, all you all walked into this center this morning. And those who are online came into this center this morning, into this community, surrounded by love. Breathe it in. Breathe it in. Surrounded by love. Protected in the arms of love, accepted into this energy of love, recognized as the basis of love. Oh, yes. We are made in the image and likeness of a godness. And as we recognize this of each other and within ourselves, We become that which we seek, the peace, the beauty, the harmony, the joy, for it is all within us. We are, each and every one of us, the magnificence of God in form. Oh yes, it is true and it is so. So again, my beloveds, thank you for that fabulous music. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I stand in the back and listen to it, you know, and I, because I get to dance back there and I get to sing and direct and all of that. And then, this is something you don't know. I imagine that Rochelle, with that fabulous voice, is singing using my voice. And Steve on that guitar. Oh, yeah, that's me. Yeah, I love the air guitar. <laughs> yeah, and I'm really good at it, too, by the way. Not so on the piano so much, but the guitars. Oh, yeah, I even know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's wonderful. It's wonderful to be here with everyone today. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. And we have so much so much loving energy here. I'm just lifted by it. But I did forget to tell all you all, you know, I've had this little issue here. Well, just be sure and hug me on the left because it's still hard to get the deodorant up to the right arm. <laughs> oh, I got to talk to my friend this morning and she says, Yvonne, do not say that. Do not say that. I said, I can't help it. I can't help it. I know it's coming out. I can feel it. I'm being propelled by the energy of life and love and joy. Joy mostly. Because it's in joy that I don't take myself so seriously. And if I'm not taking myself so seriously, I'm not judging myself so harshly. And if I'm not judging myself so harshly, then I have more grace and and love to extend to the world, and I'm not judging you all. Not that I would, of course. But I'm not judging the rest of the world so harshly. 
Because there is a grace when we are able to stand in, in the joy of the moment. There's a grace that just holds us, holds us in that energy of love. We are God's delight. We are God's delight. And in being so and in doing the things we do, we get to delight each other quite often, quite often. Yes, amen. So I'm going to start this service this morning with um, uh, Rumi. I love Rumi. I love that, that um, Jamal said, uh, um, God, God, I've prayed so much to you. I've prayed so much to you. And you've come into my life little by little. And I have left it little by little. You see, that's the idea, is that we become more of the God self that we are and less of the ego self that we have protected and grown with and been, you know, strong in. We're not getting rid of any part of us. We don't have to. How do you do that anyway, by the way? I can pretend like I don't have a past or I haven't made mistakes or whatever, but it's all part of life, the life that we have, the life that we've created, the life that we've lived, the life we've fought against or fought for. It's all there because it's all part of us. So we don't have to get rid of anything, but what we lay down, we can lay down with gentleness and forgiveness. We can lay down with kindness and love and claim back the energy that may have been with those things we're laying down that we no longer choose to carry or no longer choose or choose no longer to let run our lives so i want to share with you the guest house by rumi this being human is a guest house every morning a new arrival a joy a depression, a meanness. Some mom momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Well, welcome and entertain them all, even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your home empty of the furniture. Still, treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whatever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. I love this piece of poetry because it's about not fighting what we experience as human beings and not succumbing to it and then identifying with it and becoming that which we've experienced. It's about, oh, the beloveds. Oh, my beloveds, I'm so pleased with you and your choices to be, your choice to be your magnificent self and all the rest, all the rest, lay it down. For you have never changed, nor can you be changed from the divine spirit that you are. But we fuss around, don't we? We fuss around. And we have these experiences, and we have all this stuff that's going on. And some of it makes it re us really happy, and some of, it's pretty, some of it is pretty challenging. And some of it we don't even see or recognize as we're going through it because we're, we have our focus over here. I, I read this interesting thing the other day that said we only use 5% of our vision to actually see what is in front of us, the vision from these two eyes. The rest is what we've, we have going on inside of us, what we've, we've already experienced so we know what this is out here and what we're feeling and what we've determined to be truth about something. So it has to do with beliefs, it has to do with feelings, it has to do with our eyesight. Uh, we in, we experience the world, each one of us individually, 
and in a way that fits what it is we're expecting. What it is we're expecting. I was expecting today to see all your magnificent faces. And since half of you came in from the time I looked the first time, I was like, where are they? Don't they know I'm expecting them? Don't they know I'm waiting for them to be here with me? Because we're all coming together to stand under the shelter of each other and recognize that we breathe into that that life that is in, within us and through us that is always for us. God, one life. Oh, I love that so much. <sighs> You've been so serious with me here. I have to tell you about a little situation that happened in a large city back east. The minister called his friend who um, has a pizza shop there and he said, oh, Joe, I'm going to be down and pick up a couple of pizzas. And Joe said, oh, good, you're coming in yourself. And he said, yeah. So my friend goes down, picks up the two pizzas, and he hands Joe a $100 bill. Now he's just getting two pizzas, right? So he expects a little change back. And Joe says, oh, thank you so much. So good to see you. But the friend says, you know, he's a minister. He, salary isn't that high. He said, well, what about my change? And Joe looked at him, and he smiled, and he said, Oh, you know, you know, change comes from within. <laughs> and we do know that. Sometimes we fight it, but we do know that. That's where our change does come from. It comes from within. And, and today I want to talk about what it is that brings us to the point of looking at what is within. But I'll start with what Ernest Holmes says. The power and creativity that resides by nature in thought is directed through the process of a prayer of faith. The power and creativity that resides by nature in our thought is directed through the process of a prayer of faith. So that, that alone tells me we have to be really awake and aware to what it is we have faith in. I had faith that all you all were going to show up today. I was just getting a little impatient. See? I, it, it, it is such a, an act of faith to know something before you see it, to be able to feel the feelings around it before you actually have it. That is an act of faith. And we do that with the wonderful things we're, we're, we're expecting and the wonderful things that we're w walking toward. And we also do that with the things that we are resisting that we don't want to happen, but we're expecting them to. So you see, we have faith that we're using all the time. We just want to be really clear with ourselves, really kind to ourselves, and recognize what it is that we have faith in. Constructive, affirmative thinking leads us to that wholeness and faith in that wholeness that is the key to the fruits of our actions. Our faith leads us to our knowingness of wholeness. And let me just be really clear. Wholeness is not about the perfect working body. I'm talking about our spiritual wholeness, which can never be affected by anything. That's what we're talking about. So sometimes when we're praying for the wholeness of the body, remember, remember that your first alignment is with spirit in that wholeness of experiencing spirit through this body. Just be sure and give your body the respect it deserves. You know, it's, it's housing this, this thing that we're using to experience life with but it is not the life of us. This body is not my life. My life resides within this body. And I keep praying for it to hold together and not be falling apart here and falling apart there. Although I'm very, very grateful. 
I'm very, very grateful. This, this whole thing the last three years and the things I've experienced health-wise, never sick with the disease, always getting, um, falling off the boat, you know. There was a month without being able to full leg cast. Then the, the bilateral knee surgeries, that was a month out. And then this. And here's what I, I got up yesterday morning and I thought, I have not been properly, and by properly I mean sincerely from my heart, as grateful for the help and that I have received as I have been resentful about needing that help. Isn't that something? Ain't that something? Ain't that wild? Yeah. So just in reflection, I get to see, oh, I was so resentful towards myself and my, my um, inclination to trip that used to be really strong and is no longer that, <laughs> that strong in my body. Um, yeah, so I was really resentful about that, although I'd be, oh, thank you so much for your help. Thank you so much for doing this for me. There was less gratitude, less joy in the connection in the moment than there was in that, when is this going to end? Yeah, and of course, just even that kind of a thought, well, that means I'm thinking it's going on and on and on. Let me just give you a little hint about what it looked like. When, when I broke this and this one was sprained, here I was, my friends were calling me. This is what it looked like. Couldn't use this hand to even hold the phone, so I'd get this little earplug thing, you know, the little that you talk to and trying to get it in my ear. But I couldn't get it in really well, so I'd be like this, and I'd say, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, hold on just a minute, I think it's falling out. That is not conducive of feeling in control of one's life. <laughs> so, now I can look back and laugh. It was quite the little challenge for a while. <laughs> and that's, that's what I want to talk about today, is reflection. Because in reflecting back, I can see where my energy was going. Praise and gratitude right here, but this mountain was of resentment. This mountain was of, of, uh, of, of all these ideas about what I should be doing and what I can't do and how did this happen again and, and all this stuff that looks like blame and behind it was, of course, fear. What if it continues? You know, lots of times behind our, our dissatisfaction Behind our disappointments, there's fear. What if this never feels any better? What if it never gets any better? Well, let me tell you right here and now, I got it. I got it. It doesn't feel better out there because of what's going on out there. It's just like Joe said to my friend. Change comes from within. So now I'm changed. We get to reflect on everything that we want to, that we experience in our lives or want to change or are re-experiencing. And remember, if it's from the past and you've got that energy around it now and you've got that, that uh, disappointment, hurt, pain, whatever it is, anger, you are re-experiencing the past. You are not in it, in that sense of experiencing it afresh, you have brought it forward to re-experience. And that's okay. In, in um, David Hawkins' book, Letting Go, I love that book. First I loved it, and then I hated it, and then I loved it again. Because it's, it's got so much that I get to look at and say, Whoa, is this possible that I am contributing in this way to that which I do not want to experience? Well, <laughs> yep, that's what my kid would say. Yep, mom, that's you. Well, I, I had no idea. And, and that's, 
that's part of our relationship with others. They reflect back to us. And if we can move out of that little space that for me got really big and then it started to come back into some kind of semblance of sanity, um, hurt feelings. You know, when someone we love has hurt our feelings or someone we respected, we think they've dissed us a little bit or something or didn't care enough to, wow. If we can pull ourselves, well, I'll go back to what David Hawkins says. He says, don't, don't try and stuff the feeling. That's the worst thing we can do is stuff our feeling because you know it's still there and it's just going to come out sideways. But he says, Feel the feeling. Feel it right then, right there. Now, here's what we're so responsible for is how we act on it. So let's just feel the feeling, the disappointment, the anger, the rage, whatever it is. And then we move into what is it do you want? See, then you, you move yourself into that logical place. Is this what I want to continue to feel? Is this what I want to continue to experience? Is this what I want to continue to carry into my life? Heck no. I really don't. No, no, no. Oh, then I'm responsible for another, another choice. And that's the letting it go. Just lay it down. Let it go. If you want to bless it, lay it down and bless it. If you want to just put it behind you, tell God, you, you bless it, God, because I'm not able to in this moment. But I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm willing. Yeah. And it's our willingness that brings us into something new. It's always the willingness that brings us something, into something new. And when we're willing to have a new opening, you know, I told you about the glad, the the um, teacher who filled his who filled the students' cup up to overflowing last week, and it was running all over. An opening has to have a, an open mind has to have space for something new to come into. It's not just well, we're not going to add any more, and we're going to rehash all of this. No, we want to create space for something new. That means you don't already know it, but you're willing to allow it, and then you'll make the decision of, "Wow, oh, this is this is prime," or "Hmm, this doesn't quite fit. Maybe I'll explore it some more," or "Hmm, no thanks." But we have to have that space for that. And that's how, if, if we're going to create a new world, we have to be participants in it. If we're going to welcome and create this new world that I think we all have this desire for, a new experience for the world, for humanity, for all of life, we have to be willing to be participants in it. And if we want to be participants in it, we have to reflect on how we got to this moment, this place. Right here, right now. So in reflecting back, the first thing that came up was how, the joy I feel. Today is my friend's birthday, my best friend's birthday that's out of state. Oh, my gosh. And she and I have been friends um, for about 25 years. But here's the deal. We went through all of our practitioner training all of ministerial school together, all of this spiritual journey. So I'm reflecting on what did my friendship with this woman give me? Well, number one was her faith. Her faith was just unreal. I'm like, oh my gosh, lady. Her faith, whenever my faith was down and I was challenging things and questioning things, her face, her faith, which showed on her face, was always absolute. Uh, she, she would listen, we would talk, sometimes we cried together, but her faith was so strong. And then when hers was shaken, I got to reflect back to her what she had given me. And I didn't reflect back words. I reflected back a belief because my friend didn't just talk to me about faith, she lived from faith. I go kicking and screaming, and she went to her knees, and she lived from faith, and that's, that's a gift I got from her, our friendship, incredible gift I got from our, our friendship. I 
I also learned how to be safe and trust. I used to like to be really surfacey with the people I was around. You know, the less they knew, the less they could judge. The less they could judge, the higher they'd think, the better they'd think of me. This was all in my mind, right? Yeah. But it didn't work for us because our instructor in practitioner studies, which is pre minister, could be pre minister, it was for us studies, um, wouldn't let us be that. She said, either get real or get out. My desire to, to, to be more knowledgeable, to have more understanding of God within, not from the books, but within, was greater than my fear of being real and being honest and being vulnerable. So that was another gift she gave me. The third gift she gave me, which is just, I can reflect on this, and it's just amazing. But she saw in me what I saw in her. I saw this beautiful being who was just so connected. Anyway, she just gave that to me for 23 years before I really embraced it. And one day she was like, Get real. This is you. Am I really? Am I really a precious child of God that is much more than the mistakes I've made and the chaos I've created? And she just held me. And I knew a truth that I'd never known before. Now, last week, she said something that hurt my feelings. And so I, do, I did what I've always done, withdraw. And it wasn't what she said, it was her tone of voice. How do you get a tone of voice over the phone that, from your best friend that you're just laughing and talking about? But something, something was in me, it wasn't her. And so when she calls me back, she says, is something wrong? Here, here I am. No, everything's fine. What's your weather like there? Because I'm hiding. I'm hiding in the old stuff. I'm hiding in the old feelings and the old fears. And as soon as I got off the phone or shortly thereafter, two more cups of coffee, I realized, man, this is not where I want to be. I love her. And I, more, greater than I love her, I knew I'm, I know that I am loved by her. What do we owe the people that we, loved by, that we are loved by? We owe them our authentic ex communication. So I had to call her back. And of course, we're over that. But we talked about this morning because without reflection, I wouldn't have known that. And the, the key to it, I think, is, is so great. And, and um, sometimes it's, it's hard for me to really believe or understand, not believe, but to understand fully. But whatever we're carrying around about someone else, they get the message, consciously or subconsciously. They get it. And then we wonder if it's not a really good idea about them, why they're acting out with us. Well, if they aren't sure, which I wasn't in that moment when I thought her tone was harsh with me. In that moment, I just wasn't in my grace of knowing I was a beloved child of God, and of course she is also. I was like, oh, my best friend just cranked at me. She used a cranky voice. If, if we carry something forward to someone else and they aren't sure, they don't remember who they are like I didn't in that moment, there's going to be a reaction. And we wonder why they're being that way. Or better yet, there's what I did, which was denial. I denied it at first. Everything's fine. Are you sure, Yvonne? Yes. How's the weather? 
You know, it's that need to protect. Protect from whom? From what? What I was protecting myself from was nothing that she had done or said. It was my idea that I wasn't worthy just in that little moment. See you not really that lovable or loved or worthy or good. When we reflect, we get to move into more joy. When we reflect on things that are good, of course our friend, my friendship with her is just fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. But there's also the forgiveness part that comes up, which brings more joy. There's that forgiveness of self and forgiveness of others. And then we get to move into that place and be participants in the grace and the glory and the goodness of God that we are. So I ask you to join me in this moment in total gratitude, total gratitude that in not taking myself so seriously, which we are all free to make that choice, it allows that opening, that opening of heart and mind it allows that apology to come forth. It allows that truth, not about you, but about me. And I may share it with you. But as we move into that space of gratitude, we open doors. We pull up the shades. And we fling open the door to our hearts and say, yes, yes, God is good. And I am available for that good. And as I know that good is here for me, I know it's here for all, all, all. And I know that anything I see and everything I see that does not look to me like the good is truly a space of, and a place where the love of God is for that person, that thing, that experience is not being remembered. And so as we, we call our oneness, as we claim our oneness, as we feel and live from that truth of oneness, we disarm ourselves. We let go of the weapons of destruction. That thing called hate, that thing called resentment, that thing called disparaging remarks, that thing called leaving them out, separating from. And we embrace, we embrace, we embrace this life that we didn't create, that we are a part of from the creation of the Creator. And we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And happy birthday to Sharon. Well, I want to take a moment to thank everyone who joined us on, online. And I want you to go forth and shine, if you, particularly if you joined us online. We look forward to seeing you again, and we are thankful for your support. And now, as our ushers come forward, let's share in our abundance by saying our abundance.